Welcome back, everybody. As we've been saying, it is Women's History Month, and we are here for it. And today we are talking about an amazing organization that empowers girls and women through education. It's called Play Like a Girl, and Dr. Kimberly Clay is reclaiming the phrase as a sign of strength and leadership. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Welcome Thank in. you. You're Thank you. incredible. Glad to be here. Thank you. You're remarkable. It's like coming home, <laughs> right? Yes, I was yes. here for a different cause last year, and... <laughs> I'm back, oh. and it's all about Women's History Month, and we I'm super are, excited to be back. We are happy. Okay, let's talk about Play Like a Girl. Tell us, tell us the mission, what yeah. everybody needs to know about so it. So Play Like a Girl is a nonprofit, uh, 20 years old this year. I'm super excited about that. Um, actually started as a, um, really a passion project as a doctoral student um, when I was studying at the University of Georgia, uh, sorry, University of Alabama, sorry. Uh -oh. <laughs> University of Alabama. I went on to teach at the University of Georgia, so that's uh, thus the, the complication with the two terms. Uh, but the goal for us, our mission is to level the playing field for young girls. Um, what we know is that women make up over 50% of the U.S. population, but uh, we actually pale in comparison. Uh, in representation of women in male-dominated fields like science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Mm -hmm. So what we aim to do is to leverage the skills that girls naturally get from sport, playing sport, uh, keeping them active and engaged in sport as they go through that transition between middle school and high school, mm -hmm. and helping them to see how those skills can help create uh, competition both on and off the field mm -hmm. so that they are then prepared uh, and positioned for those competitive careers in male-dominated fields. So it's beautiful. Amazing. And as the founder, I've got to say, you are the perfect role model. Thank you, you were one of our remarkable women, Nexter's remarkable you. women. Yes. Um, we got to talk about your background because it is incredible. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. It is quite busy of a background. <laughs> yes. um, it continues to evolve. Um, one, I'm a country girl. I came from the dirt roads of Mississippi, uh, rural Mississippi, right outside of Memphis. And I found my way out through education. I went on to New Orleans, uh, where I studied at Xavier University of Louisiana. Uh, thought I'd be in your position at yes. the time. I was a mass comm major. Uh, but I fell in love with public health. And my career took me to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and uh, ultimately doing cancer research. I lost a brother to a childhood cancer at the time. There was only about a 20% um, cure rate. Today it's 100%. He was a patient at St. Jude, didn't survive his cancer, but it informed so much else uh, in terms of the industry itself, the cancer that he uh, specifically was diagnosed with, and then ultimately my career decisions around where I would spend my life and work uh, in published research. So I left my academic career to run Play Like a Girl full time as a CEO volunteer. Uh, CEO uh, 13 years ago, but that work uh, was probably some of the most important work uh, that informs the work that I now do. So being a woman in STEM, right, doing the research published, uh, specifically I did work looking at the uh, relationship of spirituality yeah. and how long an individual survives and uh, actually succeeds with cancer after diagnosis and treatment. Wow. So having done that work, again, knowing and recognizing that I was very, I was one of very few women doing cancer research, but also women of color, mm -hmm. informed my decision to uh, really put the rest of my life's work into Play mm -hmm. Like a Girl. So that's my departure from academics to run the organization full time. It's amazing. Oh, wow. Okay, we have to ask you about Power Hour because uh, girls in our area can yeah. take part in this. Yeah, so Nashville is home, although we have a footprint that is national. And tonight, uh, in partnership with our favorite company in town, Bridgestone Americas. We will host the fifth installation of our Power Hour Nashville program, uh, which is a, um, it's a speed mentoring opportunity that has a really unique twist. It's a mother-daughter uh, opportunity where girls and moms will come together. Uh, we'll have conversation around some of the challenges that women and girls are facing in male-dominated industries like automotives, mm -hmm. right, uh, and in sport and the other areas of STEM. Uh, but most importantly, parents will walk away with new language to engage their girls around in terms of affirmations, how to speak positivity, uh, because one of the things that we teach as a part of the growth mindset is the importance of using failure as fuel. Mm. So in the STEM fields in particular, uh, there's a lot of failing that happens before you actually win 
in some of the situations, yeah. right? As as a scientist, that that's what I know in the research world. And so often, you know, again, that grade doesn't quite make it to what mom wants it to be or dad wants it to be. And so we want to also treat uh, teach our parents how to change their language uh, when encouraging their girls and affirming them uh, to keep them on track uh, towards those really competitive, but also daunting yeah. careers that they may wow. want to pursue. Thank you. You're, you're amazing. Failure and fuel. That's just that. a little Thank nugget you. of what Thank you can you. get. Thank yes. you so Beautiful. much, Dr. Kim. Get involved in Power Hour. You can find all those details online. Visit iplaylikeagirl.org.